Okay, so let's take a look at this question here. This is question number 7D, and what we're looking at trying to do is figure out or derive the equation for this expression. Um, and these are root y equals um, root x type graphs. And we are, we want to know what our, essentially our translation, reflection, and um, any tra um, scaling or uh, expansion or contraction type values would be um, for this for this question. Okay, so this is our base function, and then our more general function. Um, I'm going to write it exactly this way a little bit. Y minus k is equal to a times um, square root of b over x minus h. Okay, and then what we need to do is figure out <clears throat> what are these different values here for x. Uh, or sorry for H, K, um, A, and B, and work out what our derived equation would be from, from this thing. So the very first thing we have to look at this graph here is when we take a look at this, we have to ask ourselves, um, is there any reflections applied to this um, as compared to our base graph? So remember, our base graph always is going to tend to look like this. It would start at zero, and it would just grow kind of like an exponential curve but it's a root curve so it's a little bit flatter um, and so what we have is our endpoint here is this thing and our other endpoint here so how does this curve how does the one in black compare to the one that I've drawn in red okay so this thing is actually been reflected a couple of times. So the first thing it has been done is it's been reflected in the um, x-axis and also in the y-axis. So there are two reflections involved here. Okay, there is one that is ref it's reflected um, it's reflected in the um, the x-axis, and then it's also flipped through the y-axis. Okay, so if you think about it, this this arrowhead here has to that we see in black has to match up with the one that's in red. So if we put a mirror right here, and then we flipped it um, over the x-axis like this, we would then move the arrowhead up, and then we would have to flip it through the y-axis again to move the arrowhead over to the other side. So there's actually two reflections involved here. Okay, so it's sort of reflecting horizontally and then reflecting vertically um, to, to try to get this, this original thing um, done here. So I'm just going to erase those points there. So two reflections. So we're going to say we have reflection in the x-axis and we also have a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, so what does that mean when we reflect something? So when we reflect something, what we're doing is we're actually modifying the, or the this equation, and we're applying a negative 1 to both the A term and the B term. Okay, so this means that A is going to be negative 1, and B is going to be negative 1. Okay, because we're, we're reflecting them both through the x and the y axis. Um, so when we multiply, the a, the a term is the one that reflects through the, uh, modifies through the, uh, over the x axis because we're changing the, the y value from basically the opposite side. And then when we multiply by negative 1 for b, we're flipping it over the y the y-axis. So that means our equation is going to be rewritten into something that looks like this. y minus k is equal to negative a times the root of negative b x minus h. So this is kind of our new base equation that we're going to work from because we have to work from the ones that that's reflected by applying that negative one to it. Okay, so then what we have to do is we need to figure out what our endpoint is. So our endpoint is the thing that moved. Okay, so the endpoint here is, um, it's going to be this, this origin one right here. So the endpoint here is basically our h and k values. Okay, so h refers to the x-axis and then k refers to the y-axis. So here h is going to be 7 plus 7 over 
and k is going to be plus 4. Okay, so those are, that's, that's how we would get that endpoint, which would have been at 0, 0 to where it is sitting there right now. And it's going through this, this new equation here. So the first thing we can do here is we are going to um, plug in H and K and into our equation and then solve for um, A or B. Now, the thing that you, if you remember that when you have an expansion or contraction value here, um, we can just solve for one of the variables A or B. Okay, so what we can just assume to do here is we're just going to say um, B is equal to um, the value of one in this case. Okay, so again, we we have to we're we're making the keeping them negative to apply the reflections, but we're just going to say B is one. So eventually, what we're going to solve for here is A. Okay, because that's the one value we're gonna we're gonna need to know what coefficient is in front there. So we'll plug our our terms in here. So we're going to have here Y minus four is equal to negative a, that's what we're going to solve for. Okay, and then we're going to do negative 1, because we're just going to say b is 1, but we're going to, but we're using our reflected value, so we have to keep the negative sign there, and then it's going to be x minus 7. Okay, now we need a point that we have to plug in for y and x values here, so that we can solve and figure out what a is. So we do have a point on the curve here, that is given to us as uh, x is negative 2 comma 1. Okay, so that means y is um, going to be the value of 1 and x is going to be the value of 2. So we'll plug this in here. y is 1, so we're going to give you 1 minus 4. It's negative a. Okay, and then we're going to multiply by negative 1 times negative 2 minus 7. Okay, so 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 3, negative a, and then I am going to have the root here of negative 1 times negative 9. Okay, so we just got to be careful there because we can't have a negative square root, but this is going to give us positive. So this is going to give us negative 3, is going to give us negative a, is equal to the root of 9, so this is going to be 3, a times 3. Okay, now we want to, now remember, we're, we're trying to figure out what is the missing value here for A that we're going to be plugging into our reflected equation here. So A, um, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3, so A is equal to 1. Okay, so therefore, in our original equation, um, or our reflected equation here, A is going to be equal to 1. So our value, our equation here is just going to simply be Y minus 4 is equal to a is 1, but we're going to keep the negative sign, so it's just going to be negative 1 times, well, let me just put this down underneath the grid here. Let's do it a little bit below here. So we're going to have y, <clears throat> y minus 4 is equal to negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, um, x minus 7. Okay, so we know both A and B terms are just going to be the value of 1. Um, and then we'll just simplify this here. So I'm going to bring the negative 4 over. So this negative 1, we're just going to write, just put it simply a negative in front of the square root bracket. Then we're going to put a negative in front of this, x minus 7. And then we're going to add the 4 here. So our final expression for this equation is going to be y is equal to negative root negative x minus 7, okay, under the root sign, plus 4. And if you check and graph this in Desmos or on your calculator, you'll see that this equation generates the exact graph that you see there in black. Okay, so the, the trick to this question was to um, rewrite the base equation by making sure that our reflections are applied here. So we have two reflections involved, so we have to flip it on both the x and the y axis. So we have to put a negative 1 in front of the a term and a negative 1 in front of the b term to accommodate for those. And then plug in our, figure our translation points, um, set 1, remember we, and we're not solving 
for A and B, um, the way that you want to look at solving these is you just want to make sure that you have, um, you can set one to just be the value of one, and then you can find the value for the other one. And it really doesn't matter which way, which one you find, it'll all come out as the same. So we're just, we would just say that the value of B is going to be one. So we're going to solve for A and it just so happened that A has also ended up being one. Okay. And then, so when we plug our values into the equation, it will, uh, will show this. All right, so that's how you would approach doing question 70.